Hey guys. I picked up this power strip out of a free bin at a garage sale a while back. I grabbed it because it's made out of metal. And these three screws here, that means this thing uses regular outlets, so it's repairable. Two of the outlets on mine have chips in the faceplate underneath the ground contact, but we can replace these. You can even go crazy and put hospital grade outlets in these. Hospital grade outlets can be identified by a green dot on them. They have super grippy contacts, so the plugs won't pull out accidentally. Some major kegel action going on there. They have other features that make them better than regular outlets too. Normally you have to wrap the wire around the terminal screw, but on the hospital grade ones, there's a little pressure plate clamp mechanism inside. You can just stick a straight piece of wire in there and tighten it down. And for the mounting screws, instead of those paper washer things that always fall off of regular outlets, hospital grade ones have a metal wire spring retainer. They're just way nicer to work with all around. The problem with hospital grade is that they're way more expensive. Now, when I wired my shop, they were only like five bucks a piece, and I put all hospital grade outlets on the ground level, but even at five bucks a pop, I wasn't going to put them in the ceiling level outlets for the lighting, since these outlets are hardly ever used. So that's when I found these commercial spec grade outlets that were like half the price, and they seem to have all the same features as the hospital grade ones, just minus the green dot marking. I'm sure it's possible that there's some other differences internally, but they're still a big step above standard grade outlets. And I have a bunch of them left over, so that's what we're going to upgrade this power strip with. So it'll be kind of like a poor man's hospital grade power strip. Now, when we open this power strip up, there's going to be a couple surprises. First off the good, we got actual 14 gauge solid core copper wire connecting all the outlets, which is nice to see. We got some kind of surge suppressor over here. I'm probably going to take that out when we rewire this. These surge suppressors do go bad after a few years. And then the outlets, these are backstabbers. Backstabbers are the type of outlet where you just press the wire into the hole and a spring tab holds it in place. There's a release tab over here that I can press with a small screwdriver to release the wire. I'm not really a fan of this style connection, but we're replacing these outlets anyway. I did also notice that once I had the outlets removed, the mounting tabs on my new outlets would interfere with each other once installed. There's just not enough room for them, so they gotta go. Now off to the grinder then. That's a violation of every known NEC. Don't care, doing it anyway. I'm not going to spend an hour online searching for earless outlets, which may or may not even exist, when I can just make my own for free. That is looking better. These will fit in there now. To do the wiring, I temporarily put the outlets on top of the power strip so I could guesstimate the length of wire needed to connect them together. I didn't like how originally they had quite a bit of bare copper sticking up past the terminal, so I re-stripped new wires for these connections. I also didn't like the way the outlets ground themselves. Originally the outlet ground was only making contact through the outlet retaining screws on the front of the case, so I figured I'd add some individual ground wires for each outlet. They'll all be connected together with this WAGO connector. I like these way better than regular wire nuts. I've seen too many melted and singed wire nuts installed by so-called professional electricians. And no, these are not the same style connection as on the backstabber outlets. These use a lever to keep constant pressure on the connection. It's a completely different thing. Anyway, I then realized that I needed a four-way WAGO connector since I need another ground wire to attach to the case, but I didn't have any four-way WAGOs in stock. So here we got a little pigtail connecting two three-way WAGOs, and this wire here will connect to a screw on the case for ground. Here it is attached to the screw on the case. 
Now we can reassemble. I'll carefully attach the original wires that are soldered onto the switch to the first outlet, and then we can snap our chain of outlets in place. I did notice these outlets are sometimes tight in the cover plates. One of these I had to sand the opening out a bit to get the outlet to fit. And now, the moment of truth. Two green lights mean I have it wired correctly. Did I screw something up and wire it wrong? Let's turn on the power. <laughs> nah, I'm just messing with you. We got two green lights, so we're all good. I'll double check the other outlets to make sure. Yeah, there is some serious cable grip on these outlets. I'm going to mount this thing upside down under the desk in my office where the plugs will hang down from it. And I won't have to worry about anything unplugging. This is going to be awesome. Anyway, let me know if you nerd out over power outlets like I do. Thanks everyone for watching. See you later. Backstabbers!